Good evening. Welcome. I'm Cecilia Wickman, co-curator of Joyce J. Scott, Walk a Mile in My Dreams. I'm here to welcome you to the third and final conversation as we close out an extraordinary season of our Risk-Taking Women in the Arts series. We're thrilled to gather tonight in connection with Joyce J. Scott's 50-year career retrospective, which is on view here at the BMA through July 14th before traveling to the Seattle Art Museum in October. For those of you who have reserved your time tickets, today is one of our very special free admission dates for the show. And the next is on June 23rd, so be sure to reserve those time tickets, and we hope you'll come back again and again. The Risk-Taking Women in the Arts series, sponsored by the Deborah Buck Foundation, an organization supporting institutions actively working to reverse the marginalization of women in the fine arts. This series is dedicated to the loving memory of Sue Dalsheimer, Deborah Buck's mother, who is a longtime friend and supporter of the Baltimore Museum of Art. And we want to thank you, Deborah, for choosing to honor your mother in this way. Our speakers this evening connect to this matrilineal ethos. Kay Lowell Muhammad um, has had this ethos propelling her theater company, Wombwork Productions. And Joyce Scott's own mother was an artist and her first teacher. Elizabeth Talford Scott's creative nourishment has been important to both of them and will certainly feed tonight's conversation. We want to invite you all to spend time in her retrospective, Eye Winkers, Tumble Turds, and Candle Bugs, The Art of Elizabeth Talford Scott. Before it closes, we have a couple more weeks uh, until April 28th. And to learn about the organization of her work all over Baltimore City, organized by student curators and Micah's exhibition development seminar through the No Stone Left Unturned Elizabeth Talford Scott Initiative. Let's give a hand to those incredible student curators. And I am thrilled to share, this is late breaking news, but both sides now, an extraordinary quilt by Elizabeth Talford Scott that is installed in the BMA's contemporary wing rotunda will remain on view through the end of Joyce Scott's retrospective in July. So continue to come back. Okay, so this evening we get to listen in to a conversation between friends, Joyce J. Scott and Kay Lawal Muhammad, two women of brilliant vision and intellect whose chemistry and comedy and precision in delivering scathing and necessary social critique straight to the heart is as undeniable now as it was 40 years ago when they met. In 1985, they formed the Thunder Thigh Review, performing first in the Diverse Works program at Maryland Art Place and at Baltimore's Theater Project, and we thank both of the organizers in those spaces for sharing their archives with us. And then until the early 1990s, they performed at important experimental venues up and down the East Coast and across the country, from Painted Bride Art Center in Philadelphia to Sushi Performance and Visual Art. And these are really spaces that nurtured creative possibility for so many artists. They toured internationally in Toronto at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival in Scotland. They traveled uh, Scotland and Holland, and they commanded any stage from avant-garde theater festivals to live television. Each in her own right is a luminary artist, performer, organizer, and educator who in their separate ventures in the years since have prioritized this ethos and ethics of learning and exchange that seeds possibility for the generation that came before and the generations that will come after. They've continued to collaborate most recently in a music video produced by Rasan Hammond and Ben Baker Lee that reverberates as a love letter to Baltimore. Moderating their conversation tonight, Tracy Beal is the Director of Public Programs at the BMA and she brings her talent, her ethos, her vision as an educator and organizer in the museum through her own creative practice as a musician, metalsmith, and jewelry designer. What is about to unfold live is their conversation, so we'll just be at the edge of our seats, present, and listening in. 
So between these three women, there are decades of discipline-spanning work and experience rather than siphon any more of their time. Um, let me simply direct you to their websites, which you see on screen, and you can spend more time learning and delving in after this evening's program. You are all invited to join us after their conversation and the audience Q&A for a light reception in Fox Court, and above all, to experience their collaborative work in Joyce J. Scott, Walk a Mile in My Dreams. Let's give a hand to our speakers this evening. How's everybody doing? Can you hear me? Can you hear me well? You got it on? We're gonna let your, your, your past and your Hi, future everybody. play out on the screen real quick. Look at these two. There we are. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a crowd. Thank you. Let's go forward. From the fall. <laughs> I didn't even Sack. have to ask. I was going to ask them if they wanted to do that song, but I didn't if even have to ask. If we remember the lines, we would. <laughs> we pledge our voluptuous booties. Our thighs are never, never snooty. They rise to the occasion right. through all oh. kinds of oh. abrasions. <laughs> Thank you. Poor Tracy. Poor Tracy. Lucky Tracy. Mama Kayla Wall. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Joyce J. Scott. We're going to start off talking about how the two of you met. I think it's quite interesting how the Kay two of you were brought together. was in a reform together. school. Yes. And I was coming in. We're going to start teacher. with the true story she, uh, about how the two of you met. And she was doing murals at the prison. Murals at the prison. When I saw her fat thighs, I knew <laughs> Came to like a magnet. It was, a, it was brilliant, Jewish. Thank yes. you for what you've done for my yes. life. And I, I'd never seen a person be able to paint in shackles. But this person. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> they got us started. How did we meet? How did Kate? you meet? Uh, my Aunt Alma Roberts uh, introduced us. And I'm going to get her for that. Yes. <laughs> I think two full-bodied uh, women artists, Joyce is uh, one of the most gracious and giving human beings. She has uh, all of her friends and family are here that collaborate. But Joyce is a master collaborator. She sees things in people that they don't really know they have themselves. And I was one of those uh, people that she um, believed in. I had traveled and toured a little, uh, but Joyce, every part of it, making every prop, it was so intense that um, I was honored and I still am honored to be her little sister. But she taught me so much how to give mainly, how to give and share with community. That's what she's given me. And I love her very much. <laughs> I'm so moved. <laughs> It's going to be Thank a show you, tonight, y'all. Thank you. It's going to be a you, show Kate. tonight. Thank you very much, Kate. <laughs> well, Alma Roberts, her aunt, said, I think you should meet my niece. I think you two have something in common. We didn't know it was mental illness until we got and together. Fat asses. <laughs> fat asses. <laughs> and what happened was we both had an ability to see humor in sometimes dire situations, yeah. had a real desire to write about it. Um, I want to always underline, because you can see how silly we can be, how accomplished we had to be to make these things happen. We wrote the variety of uh, stuff that we did. Mm -hmm. 
We worked with people to have set design and lighting design. We schlepped all of our costumes and all of our sets with Large us when we travel. Penises. Large penises. I, I personally crafted those myself. That's very true. <laughs> Actually, we 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 uh, went to Holland, or was it was Holland or it was Holland, I think. And they at customs, and they unpacked everything. And these were like penises were formed penises that, that had been circumcised. They were and they were out of foam. And they asked us, "What are these?" No. And so I chased the guy around, hitting, hitting him, with him it. in the head with the penis. We had no problems getting through customs after that. So you. You did have some interesting props, and some of your props were like other characters in your show. Yes. And we're here to sp specifically talk about the Thunder Thigh Review yeah. show. And that was funny, but it was also very deep, very, very moving. Funny. I agree. It sparked certain things in people that they were sometimes a little bit uncomfortable with. Absolutely. You know? Can you talk a little bit about the themes from Thunder Thigh Review? I'm, I'm thinking particularly about like women, their bodies, objectification. Well, and, Jew, and the other part about it is Jewish's visuals of, of mm. all of those uh, characters uh, made it so amazing. I think us being full-bodied and funny, that's what the audience expected. It got very poignant. Mm -hmm. And when it did, my goodness, it was the, the energy. Even maybe some even left the, left, left the audience. They did leave. They leave because they couldn't handle it because it was so very strong and poignant. You know, Joyce is not, you know, she's not the, she's not the average clown. <laughs> she's layered, you know, and I, I'm gonna be a, a clown? clown. I don't, listen. How about humorist? How about trickster? How about jester? Clown. But, but, but no, but all serious, oh, no, Joyce. Let's go late. serious, let's go serious. Mm -hmm. These characters that you created, and created, so as you created that thigh or you created whatever, it went into you in such deep ways. Share a little bit about, about what that experience like. was like. <laughs> you see how she's getting out of talking about it? Mm -hmm. Well, quite honestly, I can tell you the thing that I immediately understood with our relating was that we were jesters and the jester is really the one that talks about very deep issues but usually isn't expunged from the joint. We performed in red and black for years, not knowing that these were the trickster colors. The other thing about performance is, especially comedy, is a lot of comedy is based on pathos. It's based on sadness. And performance is about revealing. Mm. It's about revelation. And so if through whether comedy that we could pull out, where there was something under, an underbelly, that allowed people to see the multi-layers of what we did. That's what we did. And Kay is really efficient at that because you can see how funny she is. And very like boisterous, like, uh, uh, yes, Kay, boisterous. Uh, you know, very like right there for you. While she's doing it, she's pulling from you things. She's opening you up as we open up. That is really what we did. And I can't underline enough that it was real theater. We were happening when I think we got together a year or two after Whoopi Goldberg made it mm -hmm. legal for people to do one person and shows and color. to do many characters and you know not have to have a Broadway um, kind of uh, license to do it. It's true. And it made that kind of easiness on stage possible. And as you said, it was a real gateway for people of color, for women of color to perform to. And women of color who didn't look exactly like uh, Lena Horne or, or others. And I am not, that's a good looking woman, so that's not what I meant. But that stereotype, we consistently mm -hmm. mess with stereotypes. I agree. And you pushed up against the, like you said, the stereotypes and also what was considered to be the way a woman's body should be shaped at the time. And I remember sort of like reviewing and looking back at some clips from Thunder Thigh Review and the two of you looked at your former selves and you were like, wait a minute, like people were saying that we were like, we were considered larger and et cetera, but like looking back at yourselves, you were like, no, like this is, 
we this is actually it. what's happening now. And you yeah. went into like Lizzo and, and Cardi B and, and like yeah, just absolutely. moments, the, the then and now of it all, you know, looking back. I agree. I agree. And um, I think that feeling good about yourself, finding your greatness, no matter mm -hmm. how you look, sharing it with the world is what really matters. And I think that we did that well. And mm -hmm. I'm very proud of what we accomplished. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think that we, I think that there's something real specifically different about what we did in contrast to what's being done now. Mm -hmm. And we were very aware of, about our bodies and we never showed our backsides. We were always doing costuming and garments that showed how voluptuous can also be gorgeous and also the power of women. I'm a little concerned now when I see so many women halfway naked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I would do, th I would do like cartwheel. She do some other kind of, we do things I to talk about it, wheel. not just constantly twerking. And we tried very hard to write work that talked about how skilled we were as writers, not just about sex and uh, a kind of that kind of stuff where you're locked in that rapping style. It's just one form of uh, expression mm -hmm. that though seems to be taking over everything and that was not what we wanted to do. We wanted to be part of this really vast uh, creative society, not that one section that you know does well or that invites people. Mm -hmm. You were pushing back and, and forcing people to sort of look, look deeper, you know? I think that's exactly right. And the work that we have on the screen now is one of your works, Joyce, mm -hmm. called Big Mama, which definitely, like we're talking about a time when the two of you used to perform together. We're talking about the 80s and those moments and those themes still carry along with you through your visual work. Yeah. And it's interesting how sometimes things just don't don't leave us, just how the two of you could sit here in this moment and immediately start singing the song. <laughs> like it takes you back, you know? Um, there's a couple other themes within Thunder Thigh Review that I think is really interesting for us to talk about. We think about, um, we think about addiction, thinking about obsession, um, particularly as it pertains to food is one, of the <laughs> is one of the things that you two talked a lot about in your third character, which I like to call the refrigerator. <laughs> or I like to call the refrigerator your third character. Yeah, Linda yeah. De Palma sitting right there. One of the thinnest people in America who made a refrigerator. Another She's right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I mean, fatness in a time where Twiggy was the one, uh, then also the idea that there's something less intellectual, less smart, mm. less attractive about having some weight. That's not true now. You know, everybody's got implants and everything else. But back then it was a constant battle because the stereotypes were so thick mm. <laughs> about, mm -hmm. you know, about what black women had to be. And then we also are two red bones. Black people know what that means. We're like, you know, <laughs> We are uh, lighter skinned women, at, but, and we're talking about blackness all the time. Then we had to take colorism on mm -hmm. uh, right. in some places because you, you, all of the stuff you remember, being black enough to light, all of that stuff. And so we talked about it consistently in what we did. And one of our characters, Sarah Bartman, the hot mm. and hot Venus, was really important because of how she'd been sold around, looked at because of the shape of her body. She wasn't, the cartoons they made of her made her very dark skinned and very big, but when <laughs> her body came home, her body was uh, stuffed like a mummy and shown in the Paris Museum. When she finally was sent home to Africa, you saw she was a little mm -hmm. lighter skinned woman who had very protruding buttocks yeah. and drippy breasts and labia. All the stuff that came out about what beauty is made us consistently run after the idea. And also the refrigerator being a suit sayer, hmm. about it being this <laughs> kind of 
full of stuff to eat, but full of knowledge. And this place where we would go to, Kay would come and talk to it. I'd come and talk to it and <laughs> open up the freezer and wisdom would be given to it. It was that kind of, um, you know, that kind of extra mm -hmm. super duper emblematic thing about uh, food and wealth and wisdom and fatness and everything mm -hmm. else. I agree. You can't keep saying I. I know. Agree, I was about to call her out on stuff. that. It's getting. Go I was on. about to call her out on that. <laughs> yeah, but you know, and and that uh, sexual component of food is a reality. Mm -hmm. I think is a satisfying uh, reality and does, in many times, take the place of uh, a sexual experience. I think that that's very true. I know for me, it was in food. Am I getting too old? My husband is not in the audience. Well, y'all asking to talk. I, uh... But, um, and it's no question that I'm a great cook. Um, is that a euphemism, Kay? I was trying to... That I'm a great, great cook. But food, food, and even for my family, I come from a family of food addicts. Oh, that's um, and right. that's, a, that's, a rea that's a reality. Um, we, are, we were all, you know, many of us, a food addict, it, it takes a lot to be in control of food. Many diets, many, mm -hmm. uh, all of that, still struggling with it, and struggling with it today. But food becomes a deep friend. It can become a deep friend that can destroy, mm -hmm. and that's a reality. So it, it had a lot of love, a lot of pain, a lot of truth. So it was a psychological kind of a experience, us delving into that and that part of ourselves. It was, uh, it was very much psychotherapeutic theater for me. Still working on it, though. <laughs> I think she's incredibly beautiful and smart and articulate and all that. Yes. Take a bow. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so Shakespearean. I, you know. It's one of those things where uh, just thinking about walking around in the body that you have, we all have bodies, they all have two arms and two legs, basically the head with the same kind of physique, but because of your skin tone and the size of your thighs, you're separated in a real specific way. Mm. It's, it's mm. wild just to see that and to be that. Now people have, now we're like, post the first feminism kind of movement now. Now people are using that as an empowerment in a different way. Yeah. Uh, I always wonder if we think about who's looking at us as well, because that was another thing for yeah. the thighs, to so always be aware that whatever we were doing, we had to think about who was looking at us and the judgments they were making. Mm. So we might say some really naughty things or really mean things, and it was, not only a mirror for ourselves, but for those white guys who really wanted to jump a black woman but would never, or jump her, but he'd never like take her out to dinner or anything. Mm -hmm. It's about that kind of, you know, saturated racism. Mm. And about women who would look one way to get someone different, or just on and on and on. Now, my, um, I'm perplexed by women who just, um, will manufacture new bodies for themselves. Wow. To have a body that sort of looks like Sarah Bartman and hot and totness, and say it's because I'm Scandinavian. I go, oh, she don't know. <laughs> uh, that's, that's what yeah. I think, that's what I sometimes fear groups like yeah. the Thunderfoot Sides help to create. Because that, the kind of twist on feminism is very interesting now, what's going on. That's a good point. It's scary too. And while the two, of you, of two, the two of you were on the road and you were performing in front of audiences, like you're mm -hmm. talking about, like thinking about who's looking at you, what was some of the feedback that you got from some of the audiences in different places? Is that a fat joke feedback? Fat joke <laughs> feedback. I don't remember a lot of that, um, but I do know that um, a lot of people were attracted to us. Mm -hmm. I can't say that. Um, <laughs> As she shifts in the chair, she can say that. 
<laughs> when the shows would be over and we'd like, you know, get out of the dressing room, Kay would always have beautiful men and women coming up asking her out for a drink. I inevitably got Uncle Ike. Hey, here, look at here, girl. You and I go seven and seven, and then Kay would be going on with them. I was them scared out. of all of them. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> oh, Lord. There were oh, some God. interesting folks, especially like in, in places like Scotland or Holland. Where yeah, Holland. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're going to keep we're going to keep the stories PG. Well, I just remember <laughs> one night we were walking down that street oh, da, 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 da. where all the women and were it, in the it, windows and doing and we we dressed up as best we could and we locked arms and we walked down the street with all of the women naked in swings coming out of windows and all the guys looking at them. And we were trying to like represent black power and that kind of thing. We were also representing the women who were not being chosen because we weren't in swings and stuff. Ma, ma, ma. And you, did, you got a lot of admiration. There were, some there were sometimes there were sometimes people that were a little bit upset with y'all for di like going. They wanted you to be funny, you know. They wanted you to be. Or what, what did you say before? They wanted you to be clowns. They wanted you to make them laugh. Yeah, the punk. But boy, you would yeah. dig a little deeper and make them feel a little bit uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable mm -hmm. for some people. Very yeah. uncomfortable. Um, I think um, I don't know if anybody really spoke. I think they were speaking to. Um, uh, Phil Arnold told us some stuff, I think, one time that some people were perplexed yeah. about uh, the way things went. They, they yeah. thought they were coming to see, uh, you know, just a total comedy of sorts. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot, a lot of people were very uncomfortable. It's shocking. Yeah. yeah, very uncomfortable. And the images that Joyce created were so significant. And so the whole piece was very poignant, you know, that a lot of people would, would be in tears, but very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Very, very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I think we also, I, I'd like to, for folks who never don't remember it or didn't even see it, we didn't just come out and do comedy about our bodies or whatever. When the really first movement in the 80s about um, mm -hmm. immigrants and water people, boat people, that's what they were called. So we did a whole bit on that, and that's when Kay was the Statue of Liberty. Yes, right. And we did another thing, Botticelli's Venus, and I made her, and she was in a half shell and had hair. I look you fabulous, know. you guys. And it's, she did look great. You oh. did look good. And, and then there were times <laughs> when, when we did, like, Sarah Bartman or other things about that. We wrote, I came out with a big thing in my breast, but that was about looking at not only what beauty was, but what black people thought beauty was. And yeah. so a lot of the people in the audience who were disturbed with us were black men and women who would watch mm. us do work mm -hmm. about blackness, about what, you know, questioning what the many layers of, of humor for black people were. Yeah. That was still when Aunt Jemima was on the box, she's not anymore. Uh, Uncle Ben was on the box. He's not anymore. Now, I read an interesting thing that says, just notice, all of those images of black people and um, the black people have changed. So right. instead of it's like a, <laughs> it's a woman with a head wrap. Instead of Uncle Ben, he's just got a nice jacket, right? right. They're all gone. But uh, Colonel Sanders still out there. Ain't nobody saying nothing about him. Mm. And so we are erased in that way from imagery, but all of those other mm -hmm. stereotypes about white people are still, they're still gaining mm -hmm. agency from that. Why couldn't we modify it and gain agency? Interesting. And Very so, interesting. The, I mean, I think we were constantly working on those kind of stereotypes about images and who we were and how we had to project it and also how we were interested in other stuff besides fat and blackness. If something was happening to our cousins, who just happen to be Asians coming in on a boat, we're supposed to talk about that, too. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I have to, and this I want you to talk about, because we went to Holland around Christmas time, and so Santa Claus is Santa Claus who comes Whoa, in on a boat. Oh, we were shocked. And Swarta Pete is Black Pete, <laughs> who's the one who gets kids who, do, who you know, of course, he's black, and he gets kids, and he doesn't do right. And then we're like walking around because we're performing and there are all these little white kids in blackface. And we're like, oh, 
They that little like swore to peach digits. <laughs> and so we, you know, and they were saying, you have it wrong. He was a chimney sweep. We were performing in a museum or next to a museum, and there was a show up on Suarte Pete, and there he was kicking, he was, uh, there was a cauldron, and he was cooking a Dutch person in the cauldron, and he was an African jumping around like this, and I'm like, well. So we didn't leave that alone. Then we went and did work on it. We, we performed on it with the Dutch people like this. <laughs> Her idea, I told him. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> oh, I got a message about how we're holding our mics. We got to hold our mics up. A little okay, a we're usually the largest Sorry, one. Natasha. The loudest and largest ones. <laughs> Sorry about so that. Think about it. Yes. Ooh. Yes, my young lady. This is one of my favorite. This is my favorite. Um, well, one of my favorites. It's hard to pick a favorite, but one of my favorite rooms in your show right now, Joyce, and I always say this a little bit backwards because I sometimes say it the way my mother says it, more room out than in. Am I saying it the right way this Better time? out than Better in. Better out than in. And to me this, I don't know, when I think about the two of you performing and I think about it being 1980s and I think about everything that you were doing during that time, it's not like someone stood up and told you you could do this. No one said, I'm giving you permission to be everything that you are. Um, and I walk into this room and I see this, I see this figure and I know that you have a different sort of like take on it or different meaning. I see this figure with it sort of like it's, it's inside sort of like coming out, splayed out. This p particular piece is called Lynch Tree. I know that there are other implications around this piece, but one thing about your work is that everyone can see themselves in it. And I think that's part of what the two of you did with Thunder Thigh Review. It's part of what you continue to do with your work. It's just like you're constantly sort of spilling out. You know what I mean? You're constantly, and you're allowing, you're allowing other people to do the same thing. Did you, I know that you both find healing in some of your performance and some of your work. Is that what you set out for people to, to take away from this work or from this piece? I feel so. I know one um, important healing for me, I don't know if it's relevant, during the um, our, our tour was, I think Roger Ebert came to see one of our shows. That's Fringe Festival in Scotland. Of course mm -hmm. he liked me, God rest him. <laughs> You're gorgeous, Kay, come on. But what he did, he was, um, in recovery, and I had a, a, a substance abuse challenge. <laughs> and I went to my first meeting with, Ro with Roger. And in that process, and Joyce was very happy as well, but getting clean and beginning that process made the work even more intense, made it more therapeutic, made it more worthy, the message more worthy, all the messages worthy of what we would do. And the other part is joy supporting me so deeply during this process and has continued to um, support me very deeply. So that's one thing that I wanted to mention. I do love you very much, Joyce. You've been there for me for a long time. Right back at you. She's been clean for a long time too, I'll say that. I mean, it, it worked. Well, you know, I don't know if I, at the time when we started, if I really thought about how the, the healing component beyond, you know, us being African Americans and studying Africa and, okay, I'm going to get yelled at about that, I know. Yeah, but she but even, <laughs> it's just like, we're going to suck in joys. I'm really talking about, so... In the 70s, in the beginning, the 80s, we really had studied a lot about Africa and knowing that certain kinds of things you do are healing and it just became part of what you think about and know and do. I don't think I really though understood it until I saw how people were reacting to what we did mm -hmm. and how you were beginning to evolve differently from it. Because for us, 
we're still performing while that's happening. Right. And so certain things in the performances took on a different meaning. Yeah, Amsterdam wasn't like it. Yeah, was. yeah. Because K, K, I had my birthday in, in, in Amsterdam. We performed in three cities in in. In Holland, we were at a colored festival. It was called the Back Door or Backstage, Back Door, right away, the Back Door Festival. And um, we were there with lots of performers from around the world. We were with somebody, there was a company from South Africa. Australia, and she kept saying, Pickening, Pickening. And I realized she was saying Pickening, which was the British form for a kid, see that kind of things yeah. in a circle and spider women a native but indigenous yeah, group we from here uh the more we worked the more we could pull out things that were important to both of us and we kept seeing i mean we were, we were together for around 10 years so yes, we right. kept maturing as women and the things that we and we just became better at what we were doing too, but I, I cannot underline enough the difference between Kay and I. She's been very sweet and solicitous. Kay went in as an actress and a director. I went in as an entertainer, and the differences mm. are mammoth. I hadn't mm. studied it. I was there because I wanted to do it, and, <laughs> and watching, and my growing through the performance was because of you, because I, I wasn't, you know, you study it in school, but uh, you take a class or something. You're not yeah. committing your life to it as you had. So it was a great thing for me to evolve, see the change, and then to be able to apply it to my visual work. That's when I knew I was truly on the right, mm -hmm. on the right level. Beautiful. But the difference between being a true artist in that field and someone who likes to it's very, it's very it's different. different. Yeah, it's very different. And and you know, um, some great things did happen because when when coming back home, I started a company called Actors Against Drugs, exactly. um, which was really in, important. And a lot of actors that were working on recovery, and we went around and did some things, and and, and that was very healing. Um, and from there, um, I think, well, before that was the woman's company. Mm -hmm. um, Kaumba mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. even going. And then um, Mama Rashida, who's out in the audience, and Mama Walk on Water, and we started Woomwork Productions. And um, that was all very important about our relationship and keep building and building and building and how you keep making art and making right, art. Right. That's, what, that's what you taught me, to keep going and keep building and keep building and keep building. And um, you are my true sister. I don't want to get sentimental. Why not? You could if it's. To, oh, that's what it is. It's too late now. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about me a little more. Well, you know, that's it one of. Wow. My mom, Elizabeth Caldwell Talbert. She's Scott. something. Yeah. Now, uh, what what word? How was I born? <laughs> we. <laughs> In utero, you came out. Not in utero. I you, wasn't you born became, in Europe. I was born. You became an artist in utero. In utero. In utero. That's what I'm saying. In utero. Uh, all I heard was in, in utero. utero. I thought she meant in Spain. Not in or vitro, something. like we said. <laughs> no, Amy Rice, who's sitting right there, said to me, um, I used to say, I was, I've been an artist since I was in, born in vitro, in vitro. And she's like, no, that means they take a needle and you know, Joy, it's in utero. I said, oh, I better change that. So. Well, my mom, Elizabeth Caldwell, Scalford Scott was born in Black Star, South Carolina, and she was a cotton picker for most of her youth, and she took the big migration up to Maryland. She told me she was trying to get to Chicago. My father came from North Carolina, and they both got here. They were leaving the South to be able to have a different kind of freedom. They knew they would not not have racism here, but the thing about being uh, one, being forced to stay in your neighborhood at night and all of that kind of stuff by cluxers, by what they would call them. My father got a, bat, a job at Bethlehem Steel, and though he was called every kind of nigger every day, red nigger, white nigger, he worked with Polish people and were friends, Polak nigger, nigger nigger, they wanted to say nigger mm -hmm. twice, I guess, mm. red nigger, you name it, pearl nigger, he told me black nigger. It, 
he still went every day to work, right? And my mother worked in all kinds of jobs. So uh, when she said better out than in, it was about not allowing that stuff to fester mm. and stay inside you and cause you not to be the yes. angel or the person that you mm -hmm. could be. Wow. Mm -hmm. So that's what that was all about. And that is, thank you, but that's also why our relationship became so profound, because we could just get on the stage and stay. Mm -hmm. Actually, I don't know whether it was this theater, but it was a theater like this, and women would be with their husbands or boyfriends, and Kay and I would jump off the front, onto the front row, and then crawl on the bodies of the men until we got in the back. It's the truth, and the women would be like this. <laughs> we knew the ones who were hitting us, because who would hit us, the women, because when we were going to the back, they were like this. <laughs> <laughs> we, that kind of being bodacious and everything reminded me of my mom, who you can see was much darker than I, Beautiful. who with another friend, they would go out and play cards and they put on their blonde and red wigs mm -hmm. and, and go out. They, that, that tenacity, that thing, that temerity, that thing mm -hmm. that they had yes. is what keeps pushing me in my work. I said it, many of you have heard it. She always said, I shall not be denied. Mm -hmm. And that is also what we were about, right. not being denied. Good point. But, and you know, they're little steps. Don't think I'm saying, and I shall be the president of the United. No, they're tiny steps that make a difference within my life, which means when I'm working or creating artwork or we're teaching, makes that little difference in someone else gives them that little tiny gives them that little tiny bit of difference within themselves. That mm -hmm. so uh, she was mammoth in my life because of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. and a good cook too. Yeah. You can yes. tell. <laughs> and I know that she had a a very strong impact on you, Two K. And there was something that you two figured out while we were talking. Um, you did. The difference, it was today and also the, I love how you want to know when. <laughs> I think it was today and the other day. The differences in your families being also the, the thing that kind of, I guess, makes the magic between the two of you. Like we just heard from Joyce about her family and her no, being but sharecroppers. Like let's talk I about your family it. and educators. And yeah, my, my family are educators, um, PhDs. But my mother, I was making it clear, she wrote her dissertation on her hamper. Alma, her sister, her younger sister's here. She's a great achiever, too. All of them are. Um, mm -hmm. But my mother was extraordinary. And, and, and worked. we were living on North and Poplar Grove then. And she mm -hmm. wrote her whole dissertation. Didn't even have a desk. Wrote it on a hamper. And, you know, um, became a great teacher, um, educator, Coppin, at, at Coppin State University for many, many years. And many of her sisters and brothers, Alma included, Followed, followed that. I, I think she wanted me to be, a, a, she loves me and adores what I do, what I've done. Um, but of late, I love teaching. I've fallen in love with that art form. You know, and using, you know, I created a character, a hip hop granny. I'm hip hop granny, you can call me Mama K. The children love it, they treat me like I'm a superstar. I love it. <laughs> I can't get enough of elementary, middle school. I can't get enough. The high school students are a little rough a road, but I love them too. But I can't believe I followed my mother's footsteps and I can't get enough of teaching young people. So I'm well, You might now have everything you need to say. Oh, okay. You know, sometimes we get in it and we're not ready yet, <laughs> but you, you probably are completely ready. And what you were talking about, what we were talking about earlier, is we were talking about the true power and the knowledge and the strength in both of our mothers. Yeah. And how the difference was she had an opportunity to go to school. Right. And my mom did. Yeah. But she so was that's still brilliant. The, that's she, the point, the brilliance. But she did not have the opportunity. Yes, that's the only difference I, I see in it. Mm -hmm. 
What is this? <laughs> it's a poignant moment. This is <laughs> oh, I, I meant the image. <laughs> because you made me think for a second. Okay, do a little piece from. Uh, from uh, wait, do something Shakespeare. I can't remember nothing. <laughs> if I can remember a line, you know how long it takes me to remember a line. Now. Yeah. <laughs> I can many, improvise all day. How many of you have seen, you know, the video of us, the, the oh, yeah. music They're video? They're going to see it. Well, that's <laughs> yeah. being, oh, yeah, the more you have to see it then. It's in the show and you can look up, you know, on YouTube and it's on YouTube. And Kay is definitely the hip hop granny in that. Thank she you. does a whole soliloquy. She's just wonderful in it. Yes, 900 you. takes, but that's not the point. <laughs> God. She ain't lying now. <laughs> People have stuff like on their heads. Yeah, like, oh, come on, try it again, try it again. Let's try to get it this time. I'm joking. Yeah. It was 400 takes, but it's not still. <laughs> what do you want us to do with these images? <laughs> Are we doing questions? You kind of went there a little bit already. Ah. I was thinking about the two of you and how you give back to your communities, how you give to other people. Um, and just... I don't know where my question is in this. I'm trying to find my question. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can say there's a real difference between her being overt mm -hmm. and my being a, a little more not so overt. I might do, you know. You're overt. not overt? <laughs> do, yeah, would you allow, would you allow me to finish the sentence? Is somebody giving Leslie a microphone? May I finish the sentence? Is it possible for me to finish the sentence? Did you say sentence? that you're not overt? And Leslie King Hammond. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Leslie King Hammond. <laughs> Leslie. That's the truth, y'all. Oh, no. When I say the difference between being overt, I mean she's very there for her community and all the students and in schools. You. Yeah. Well, then I'm not in schools anymore. You I don't do that. You live in the street you live on. Well, but I'm not out in the street doing bits. Everybody hey, everybody. Knows who that is true. You Actually, when the mailman didn't close my door today, listen, and I'm I'm hearing somebody knocking, and he says like your door was open. I said this is just someone who lived down the street. I said would you close it for me? Boom, he, he pulled it shut for me, and you know he you didn't got walk. Over there and talk I, am to gangster. <laughs> I am my gangster. I am gangster. Nobody would hurt you. They take no care one. of you over there. They take care of me. She gangster. gangster. <laughs> I mean, it's something to be said for being a world-renowned artist and not being a gatekeeper. Yeah. I, you I freely give the information, the knowledge that you gain. And I'm saying this to both of you. Like, you, you just freely give it. It's not like, oh, this is mine, or I'm going to tell you a little bit, but not tell you all of that. Like you, like, you two are like, you're an open book, you know, as far as, like, your knowledge and what you give to people. And we appreciate that. It's important. Yeah. Thank you. It's very yeah. important. Stop it with the crying already. Okay, it's not time it's to like cry yet. Hello or something. We didn't give the crying here. cue. <laughs> well, what, what I think is very important is because we, I say this all the time. I have friends who won't put Dr. Leslie Kim won't put doctor in front of their names, and they are very, you know, they are modest about what they do. But the black community won't know we exist. Mm -hmm. Unless you're opening the doors, unless you're out there doing what you do, they'll start, they'll just consistently remember the old tomes from the past. Yeah. But there are people out there every day working hard in the field in which they exist, mm -hmm. That's right. trying to open doors. That's why it, I feel it's important and I'm a, to be loud and proud about it. Yes. Yeah. And we appreciate it. It's beautiful. It, it is. Next. Next. I'm oh, sorry, I was looking at Leslie King Hammond. Come on up here, It's just nice having all of y'all here right now. That's my, that's my professor. Everybody. This is my mentor. That's my mother, people. my father. Let's go. They're going to talk to you later about that. Legacy. That's the last part that we're talking about here. Legacy. You two have done, you've done so much. I can't even, there's a list. But you two have, like, we talked about how much you've given back, how much you've given to people. You're not gatekeepers. You're both phenomenal in what you do. Like, what, it, like, what do you want to leave behind? Like, what do you want to be, how do you want to be remembered? I'm going to start with you, Joyce. How do you want to be remembered? I told her earlier I would spend all my money and just leave debt. 
Let somebody else pay my debt. <laughs> pay everything. And she's Have saying somebody debt. Else take care of that. You're saying debt, right? <laughs> debt. <laughs> my debt. D E B T. Um, you know, I, all I can say is my legacy is my visual art and performing art. I, you know, I don't need anybody to know my personal business or any of that. Shut up, Kay. But, I, I, you know, I really think to be the most accomplished uh, artist that I can be, that's it. Because it says to others, you can be it. That's that you, you just can strive in your life and do it and be it. And the fact that we're in the 21st century means that there are all kinds of things that will consistently help us to, to live and create in amazing ways. I, that's all I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And to keep making money so that, you know, I, I can live in a very well. That's what I'd like. <laughs> that's the truth. I'd like the legacy of me going, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Kay, what is your legacy? My legacy will be to continue <laughs> elevating young people through the arts. Um, Mama Rashida knows it. It's very satisfying, um, you know, and it's a lot of work, you know. Oh, it's a lot of work. My aunt gave me the, yeah, thank, thank you. I beg your pardon, everybody. <laughs> but um, I, I think just elevating young people utilizing the arts is what I want to continue yeah. to do. And make some money while doing it. Yeah. Because what else are we here for? Are we here to be, you know, half-ass and do marginal work and sort of be remembered? And to, If not us, then who? If not now, when? then when? If we have that ability, or if we think we can garner that ability, why not go after it? That's I want right. to be the ass kicker, not the ass that's kicked. Right, that's a okay. good point. And there's a lot of ass to be used. To, she had to go there. A lot of ass. She had to go there. But that really is what I mean. I, I want to really be proud of myself. Yeah. I want to look. I want. Here's what I said I would say earlier. People died yeah. for us to be here. This Peach. isn't one of those kind that's of, right. you know, things where I was there, I, I had this, I had that, and then I'm, people actually lost our lives for enough. me to be able to be in front of you here. How many museums do you know, because Baltimore loves his peeps, would have a mother and a daughter, two different exhibitions running simultaneously, and then my mother being in eight other institutions in Baltimore City. That's right. So that's my my legacy, and then I'll shut up. My legacy is the audacity to be me. That's what mine is. And you step up. That's what I want. And the other thing I want to acknowledge is your team of, of family, of Micah yes. collaborators. It's My just gallery. A, your, yeah, all. everybody. All of them. They're all here. And yeah, most of them are. Rose. I mean, and that's a powerful community. All of them brilliant. And all of them that stick and stay. And I can't believe they've done that for you. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> but they had. The person backstage all, was like this. I don't know. I can't remember. I'm so all of us. I've never, mi I've never missed them for anything that you've done. And you're yeah. the same for them. Yeah, yeah. You're the same for them. That's love. That's yeah. community. That's how you build. That's community. And the set, let me, now that we're saying that, Let's talk about this hallowed institution. Yeah. <laughs> when, if you haven't seen, when you see my exhibition and my mother's exhibition, you'll see that they spared nothing. I've been here working for months with them. And I can tell you, I would, because you're supposed to have on black gloves and you're not the right person to touch things or whatever, I would have people who would be picking up things for me. And you know how much I love this. Put that over there. <laughs> All I can say is people with great skill and knowledge right. and ability, they just did it. They, I didn't feel ego. <clears throat> it was all right. wonderful. Calm down, calm down. I, I didn't even know. Calm name. down, calm down. But it, this institution was great. Right from Asma, the director, and mm -hmm. let's be nice to Tracy. She's been fabulous. Oh, fabulous. Tracy. Fabulous. 
Because y'all don't know, she usually has on cowboy boots and some little right, scuffy ass shoes. She's looking good today, though. She's looking good today. I you were going to try to say something. very happy about it, Tracy. I dressed up for you, Joyce. <laughs> So, so it's, it's been uh, really quite wonderful for me, and that's another way of extending uh, Take it down. our legacy and also about you. Thank you. And all the times they've been on TV and that she's going into school and all of those students who just get that oomph from her will have the gall, the tenacity to take that extra little step. That's all it takes. That's right. That extra little hit. Mm -hmm. If you can stay out of jail, you could be wonderful. <laughs> So sick. Oh, what? <laughs> Any time to eat yet? <laughs> are you are you ready for the video? Is that what you like? Well, I was going to open it up to questions from okay. the audience. I can't have all the fun asking questions. I oh, think good. we have some microphones in the audience as well. I see one question here. Right and next over there. to the lady with the mic, I bet. Hi, I got a chance to see your video. And the word friendless, um, it's been, um, I was wondering if there's a piece in, of your exhibit that corresponds with friendless. Mm. I have no, I honestly didn't hear you. Is there a piece in your, is there a piece that, in your, your artistry that connects with friendless? Friendless. Friendless. From, from the video. You, from you, the video we did. Yeah, Can you, I tell you the truth? I, I, I don't even know what that is. I know, I don't know how that sounds. It sounds corny as hell. But I, I've just been, since I was an infant, just loved and around friends. I've never been friendless. Hmm? Yeah, Micah. I've, I don't know what friendless is. I've never been friendless. From so my very beginning to now, there's, I've always had people who I loved and who loved me and supported me. And I know how that sounds. I hope that I'm talking about the same thing you are because I couldn't hear you. But if you said friendless, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I, well, I don't know who was singing, but it was, it was one of the words that were, that was describing the void of Baltimore. That oh, was yeah. Kay. That was me saying that. Yeah. Um, and um, seeing many of um, my community members that are struggling with substance abuse, homelessness, uh, pain, mental illness, all of, those, all of those family members that we see in the street that have no idea of what to do and how to get out of the pain and a lack of support within the city for some of them um, has, is p very painful to me. So I think that's what you might be talking about. I think it is. And I want you to know we made that. We went to my godson's studio 10 years ago and just playing around and made that. Did the, 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 you know, the voice over the talk. And he and his partners found it and decided it should be a music video and made that. But the fact that we're 10 years later gone through, what, 17 mayors? <laughs> Whatever it is, and we're still having this conversation. And it's, it's very prescient, it is. Yeah, that's real. Thank you for acknowledging that. Yeah. Someone else over here had their hand up. Yeah, not abstract at all, Mama. <laughs> This is also the mother of one of our finest actresses. Could you tell us your daughter's name? I'll help you. <laughs> Nicole Airy Parker. You see her on TV all the time. All the time. That's her yeah, mom. That's her Aaron. mom. <laughs> but the other part of that story is that being a stranger here in Baltimore when I first arrived, uh, I went to Johns Hopkins and finished there and subsequently married and had a baby and had a divorce, with, but I had the baby. And they were my adjunct family. So you see, she was never sad. And every holiday, that was an excuse for a family gathering. Needless to say, I'm thinking she's going to NYU to become this great 
writer, surgeon, anything. Her father's a dentist. I wanted to be a doctor. So I think I'm going to get that. Oh, no, Mommy, I hate the sight of blood. But never in a million years did I think she was going to pick acting. And she was, um, you had to, I guess, be selected to be a member of the Tisch program at that time. That's right. And this is very funny because I thought I would surprise her. Mommy, I'm going to audition now. You know, he goes, my dreams, no doctor here. But anyway, I take the train up to New York, and I sit in on this, I ease into the back row, and with a friend I had met somewhere, and I'm listening to this audition. She, he says, um, uh, Nicole, I'd like for you to act, I think he wanted to use the word crazy, but it wasn't appropriate, or, you know, out there or something. She says, oh, I understand what you mean. My mother takes care of exceptional people. So I know how to act. I know exactly how to present pixelated. <laughs> Not to mention every Thanksgiving and every Christmas, it was a family gathering. And when she had, they had, when all the kids had a captive audience, they would clear all the furniture off my kitchen stage, as they called it. And uh, they had this captive audience that was too full to move. And all the children that was there that day had costumes, jewelry, and Joyce, I'm sure there were some of your things that Shirley Probably. shared with us, <laughs> another sister. And uh, they would all have parts remembered. And our, our uh, whole appreciation of that day came when they performed and everybody took part. Like who shot Sue Allen when Dallas was a big thing? <laughs> you know, I mean, they had some scripts for you too here. And these were just kids, just little kids. And I think one of the first thing that I hate to have seen was things like drama go out of the schools. If kids could take writing and screen work and act out some of the things that they're even thinking, maybe, just maybe, we'd have a way to conquer some of this crime. Thank you. Anyway, Thank I'm you. grateful for my Thank family you. and my roots. Hi. Um, really, I, I don't have a question. I just wanted to tell you how much I totally appreciate you ladies and um, you. how you've been teaching from your example and how important that is to all of us. I'm totally blind, and so I don't see you, but I feel your energy. Oh, thank you. That's and, beautiful. Um, but I, I want to tell you how important it is because I've recently been learning from healing us together about being trauma informed and that trauma is a system that many of us are cycling in mm. and what the work that you do you show us how to cycle out of it thank you. It's, um, that's you that's our desire thank you before you leave you create a safe uh, mindset environment heart that allows us to examine our emotions deal with our losses and point ourselves towards a future. And that's cycling out of the trauma. Thank and you. I totally, totally appreciate what you're doing. Your, your legacy is love, and it's a gift that keeps giving. Thank Ooh, you. That was beautifully Thank said. That was moving. I don't know if we have one more. All right. Any more questions? I see two hands. Over here, love. Or maybe I missed some other hands, but there's two right here. Passing the mic down. That sounds like working Passing together. The mic. <laughs> Ladies, thank you for making us smile. Oh. But I just wanted to know if you would ever consider rebooting, recasting, 
thunder thighs. Rebooting. <laughs> I love how we she got said a lot recasting. Of old booty to hide. I was about to say, is that old booty or rebooty or what kind of booty is that? As long as as long as Joyce could be in a wheelchair and me with a cane, we can pull it off. We're recasting it. it. It doesn't have to be you all, but to recast it. We actually did a. Uh, we did something what five years ago, seven years ago at the like, theater yeah, project. Uh, 2012 reunion th at the uh, theater Pryor, project. Uh, our baby. Uh, Richard Pryor's daughter was our director. Rain Pryor. Rain and, Pryor. And we uh, we did something. May I think we will do. Actually, we were just talking about doing something together. You know, with some of the elder ideas. big butts. I think you suggested. I, I would never say that. Oh. Uh, to an audience. So I thought that's amazing. what she came up with. I'm sorry if I made a mistake. See, but Cable, give now, now all of the elders out there with Elder big butts, big butts. <laughs> are going to do their own show. You don't tell people that, what you're going to do. Oh, God. Can I be the producer? But I think we will because I think we <laughs> both Riddling are different. Elder big, no, too much. No, okay, all right. no. All right, I'm done. <laughs> no, Kay. <laughs> But yes, I think we will, because you can see that we can't be together without doing something, so I guess we will. As soon as she gets through this last parole bit and gets that ankle <laughs> bracelet off, I believe we'll work together. The lady there's right behind the you. Yeah. There's one more question. Hi, um, I wanted to say it's so inspiring to see your work and to see the longevity you have as an artist and how like vital it is. and how you're still performers now, like clearly still performers, and it's so beautiful. Thank you for making me laugh so much tonight. Um, I wanted to ask you, Joyce, um, your mother is a, was a prolific artist, and um, her work is so beautiful. And also being an artist yourself, how did you distinguish yourself? How did you, because I don't know, like there's a sense of, at least for me, like rebelling from my mom, wanting to distinguish myself as an individual, but also loving my mom and like how do you you know emulate and then also distinguish yourself as an individual yeah did you ever struggle with that at all and like not living in the shadow but like living up to i don't know like i know that. exactly what you asked but i never i never did that my mother and i loved each other so deeply and it was the kind of thing where she support remember she supported me in the idea of being an artist. That's a whole thing. She was with me 100% as an artist. I never felt that way. In fact, with the help of Dr. Leslie King Hammond and Dr. Lowry world. Sims, who consistently made sure that she was in exhibitions and written about in a scholarly manner, not just the old black lady who can make those quilts. Thank but, you God. Know, that went on for a very long time. The G's bins. Quilters, they helped to bust that, but there was a lot of that kind of handicraft idea about it. I, I didn't have that, and I can tell you I was with her when she passed. We lived together until she passed. I was there with you. You were not there with me, Kay. I thought I was. You weren't there with me. Kay was sure? drinking at that time. You were not with <laughs> I, I me, I wasn't Kay. drinking. I was sober by then. She was not with me, Kay. That was another dead person you were with. <laughs> Are you sure? I don't want to say nothing. You can't. I thought Alma. I was there. Alma. I felt like I it was, was just, dead. It was another dead person that you were hanging out with. I think you're right, Joyce. That That's why she's got it. an ankle bracelet. Oh, you guys Lord. don't believe me. Joyce is coming back. Oh, she's coming shit. back. My God. Oh my God. Somebody call 911. I'm going to leave the memory of my mother right there. <laughs> oh Lord. Oh, Thank help you me. For your brilliance. Help me. Help me. <laughs> there was Do a lady in the back, and then. then, then I think we, uh, yeah, yeah. one more question. Yes. Um, as an artist, I wanted to know what is the key to maintaining the visibility um, of your work and not being erased. Not being what? Not erased. being erased. Okay. erased. I feel as an artist, um, it's, it's, it's difficult because your, your things, well, I'll say my things are taken and I'm not given credit and I don't want to be erased. I don't want to hold on to what I have 
but I want to like have it out there, but have some type of control. How did you maintain that control? Well, I tell people that I was born in the sweet spot, that period, we were born in a time where not only were we talking about the performance, but I've been in many different galleries. There is the making of art and there's the business of art. My gallerist, Amy Race, is here from Goya Contemporary, which mm -hmm. is my gallery here. You can almost never do it on your own. So the way not to be erased and the not to have things ripped off and stolen is to find a gallery or an agent or something where you are helped in the legal part and help to display your work well. I think sometimes now because we can do so much online, we don't realize that that actually isn't the best business approach unless the person who's putting you online is a legal entity for you. And that is how I've done it. I've been in many galleries and um, I kept moving through different galleries because I was learning how to ask for what I needed and wanted. Some galleries closed because they were older than I when I, of course, came in as an artist. But it had a lot to do with my learning and learning about what I should be receiving and what I should give. And once I got the one or two spaces, I've been in one gallery for 40 years from Cambridge, Mass., then I stayed with them and was loyal to them because they were loyal to me. So I'm saying there's, there's the business of art mm. and that is what you can look for. And there, there, you can go online quite easily and look at different art galleries, say no, yes, find out what you do to approach them. And it also depends upon the kind of work that you do as well. I hope that answered it. That was very articulate. Thank you. She, you wanted to throw it up. Yeah. I think we're at time. Did you have something else you wanted to say? I think we're at time right now. I just want to say thank you to everyone for coming tonight. Um, I also want to thank the Buck Foundation for supporting tonight's event because everything costs money. <laughs> That's very real. But I also want to thank Cecilia Wickman, Leslie Rose. They're the curatorial team that's here at the Baltimore Museum of Art. Katerina Manchanga, who is the co-curator of Joyce's exhibition. I want to say thank you to Natasha, who's the woman behind the curtain up there making Yay, all the Natasha. things run so well. Also thanking our front of house team, our security team, facilities team, yes. visitor services, like they are part of the machine, like they help this machine keep going for sure. I want to say thank you to the education department, I want to thank this young man over here, although I, did, I wasn't able to be given your name beforehand. Travis, thank you so much from Joyful Signing. Thank you, Hero. Thank you, Angela Wheeler, Dr. Leslie, King Hammond, <laughs> all the rascals, all the girls of Baltimore. <laughs> yes. The list goes on. But most importantly, I want to thank the two of you. Me, right? Not, no. Not no Kay, just Joyce. <laughs> this is so right back at you. Everyone warned me. They were like, oh, you're going to moderate those two? Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> we are extra. But y'all were great. You also helped guide me in this process. So I just want to thank you for being here. Seriously, thank you for sharing your time. You. Yeah. So, all right, everybody. Oh, there's a reception afterwards. Sorry. There's a reception. A reception. <laughs> Fool, listen. <laughs>